Desire by Paz La Terena, a Philippine short story. She was homely. A very broad forehead gave her face an unpleasant masculine look. Her eyes, which were small, slanted at the corners, and made many of her acquaintances wonder if perchance she had a few drops of celestial blood in her veins. Her nose was broad and flat, and its nostrils were always dilated, as if breathing were an effort. Her mouth with its thick lips was a long straight gash across her face, made angular by her unusual big jaws. But nature, as if ashamed of her meanness in fashioning the face, molded a body of unusual beauty. From her neck to her small feet, she was perfect. Her bust was full, her breast rose up like twin roses in full bloom. Her waist was slim as young girls, her hips seemed to have stolen the curve of the crescent moon. Her arms were shapely, ending in small hands with fine, tapering fingers that were the envy of her friends. Her legs, with their trim ankles, reminded one of those lifeless things seen in shop windows, displaying the latest silk stockings. Hers was a body, a sculptor in a thirst for glory might have dreamed of, and molded in a feverish frenzy of creation with hands a-trembled with vision of the fame in store for him. Hers was a body that might have been the delight and despair of a painter whose faltering brush tried in vain to depict on the canvas such a beautiful harmony of curves and lines. Hers was a body a poet might have raved over and immortalized in musical fanciful verses. Hers was a body men would gladly have gone to hell for. And they did. Men looked at her face and turned their eyes away. They looked at her body and were enslaved. They forgot the broad masculine forehead, the unpleasant mouth, the aggressive jaws. All they had eyes for was that body, those hips that had stolen the curve of the crescent moon. But she hated her body, hated that gift which nature, in a fit of remorse, for the wrong done to her face had given her. She hated her body because it made men look at her with an unbeautiful light in their eyes, married eyes, single eyes. She wanted love, was starved for it, but she did not want the love that her body inspired in men. She wanted something purer, cleaner. She was disgusted and hurt, for men told other women that they loved her, looking into their eyes to the souls beneath, their voices low and soft, their hands quivering with the weight of their tenderness. But men told her that they loved her body, with eyes that made her feel as if she were naked, stripped bare for their sinful eyes to gaze upon. They told her with voices made thick by desire, touched her with hands of fire, that sheared her flesh, filled her with scorn and loathing. She wanted to be loved as other women were loved. She was as good as pure as they, and some of them were as homely as she was, but they did not have beautiful bodies, and so they were loved for themselves. Deliberately, she set out to hide from the eyes of men the beautiful body that to her was a curse rather than a blessing. She started wearing long white dresses that completely disfigure her, she gave up wearing Filipino costume, which outlined her body with startling accuracy. It took quite a while to make men forget that body that had once been their delight, but after a time, they became accustomed to the disfiguring dresses and concluded that she had become fat and shapeless. She accomplished the desired result. And more, for there came a time when men looked at her and turned their eyes away, not with the unbeautiful light of former day, but with something akin to pity mirrored there. Pity for a homely face and shapeless mass of flesh. At first, she was glad. Glad that she had succeeded in extinguishing that unbeautiful light in the eyes of men when they looked at her. After some time, she became rebellious. For she was a woman and she wanted to be loved and to love. But it seemed that men would not have anything to do with a woman with a homely face and 
an apparently shapeless mass of flesh. But she became reconciled to her fate. And rather than bring back the unbeautiful light in men's eyes, she chose to go on with the farce. She turned to writing to while away the long night spent brooding all alone. Little things, little lyrics, little sketches. Sometimes they were the heart throbs of a woman who wanted love and sweet things whispered to her in the dark. Sometimes they were the ironies of one who sees all the weaknesses and stupidities of men and the world through eyes made bitter by loneliness. She sent them to papers which found the little things acceptable and published them to fill space, she told herself. But she continued to write because it made her forget once in a while how drab her life was. And then he came into her life, a man with white blood in his veins. He was one of those who believed in the inferiority of colored races. But he found something unusual in the light ironically reads from the pen of the unknown writer. Not in the little lyrics, no. He thought those were superfluous effusions of women belonging to a race of people who could not think of writing about anything except love. But he liked the light, airy sketches. They were like those of the people of his race. One day, when he had nothing to do, he sent her to encourage her. A note of appreciation. It was brief, but the first glance showed her that it came from a cultured man. She answered it, a light, nonsensical answer that touched the sense of humor of the white man. That started a correspondence. In the course of time, she came to watch for the mail carrier for the great tinted stationery that was his. He asked to see her, to know her personally. Letters were so tantalizing. Her first impulse was to say, No. A bitter smile hovered about her lips as she surveyed her face before the mirror. He would be so disappointed, she told herself. But she consented. They would have to meet sooner or later. The first meeting would surely be a trial. The sooner it was over, the better. He, the white man, Coming from the land of fair, blue-eyed women was shocked. Perhaps he found it a bit difficult to associate this homely woman with the one who could write such delightful sketches, such delightful letters. But she could talk rather well. There was a light vein of humor, faintly ironical at times, in everything she said, and that delighted him. He asked her to come out with him again, by the shore of Manila Bay one early evening, when her homely face was softened by the darkness around them, he forgot that he was a white man, that she was a brown maiden, homely and to all appearance, shapeless creature at that. Her silence, as with half-closed eyes she gazed at the distance, was very soothing, and under the spell of her understanding sympathy, he found himself telling her of his home, away over the seas, and how he loved the blue of the sea on early mornings because it reminded of the blue of the waves that dashed against the rocks in impotent fury. How he could spend his life on the water, sailing on and on, to unknown and uncharted seas. She listened to him silently. Then he woke up from the spell and as if ashamed of the outburst of confidence, added irrelevantly, But you are different from the other women of your race looking deep into her small eyes that slanted at the corners. She smiled. Of course she was, the homely and shapeless mass of flesh that he saw her to be. No, I don't mean that, he protested, divining her thoughts. You do not seem to care much for conventions. No Filipino girl would come out unchaperoned with a man, a white man at that. A homely woman can very well afford to break conventions. Nobody minds her if she does. That is one consolation of being homely. Was her calm reply. He laughed. You have some very queer ideas, he observed. I should have, she retorted. If I didn't, nobody would notice my face and my, 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 my figure. 
She hated herself for stammering the last words. He looked at her impersonally, as if trying to find some beauty in her. But I like you, was his verdict, uttered with the almost brutal frankness of his race. I have not come across a more interesting girl for a long time. They meet again, and again. Thoughts, pleasant thoughts began to fill her mind. Had she at last found one who likes her sincerely? For he liked her, that she was ready to believe, as a friend, a pal who understood him, and the thought gave her happiness. A friend, a pal who understood him, such as he never experienced before. One day, an idea took hold of her, simply obsessed her. He was such a lover of beautiful things, of beautiful in any form. She noticed that in all his conventions, in every look, every gesture of his, a desire to show him that she was not entirely devoid of beauty, which he so worshipped, came over her. It would not do any harm, she told herself. He had learned to like her for herself. He had learned to value their friendship, homely as she was, and shapely as he thought her to be. Her body wouldn't matter now. It would please the esthete in him, perhaps, but it certainly would not matter much to the man. From the bottom of a very old trunk, she unearthed one of those flimsy, shapely things that had lain there, unused for many years. She looked at herself in the mirror before the appointment. She grudgingly admitted that her body had lost nothing of its hated beauty. He was surprised, pleasantly so. Accustomed as he was to the beautiful bodies of the women of his race, he had to confess that here was something of unusual beauty. Why have you been hiding such a beautiful figure all this time? He demanded in mock anger. I didn't know it was beautiful, she lied. Poof, I know it is not polite to tell a young lady she is a liar, so I won't do it. But, but, fear was beginning to creep into her voice. Well, let us talk of something else. She heaved a deep sigh. She was right. She had found a man to whom her body mattered little, if anything at all. She need not take warning. He had learned to like her for herself. At their next meeting, she wore a pale rose of Filipino dress that softened the brown of her skin. His eyes lighted up when they rested on her, but whether it was the unbeautiful light that she dreaded so much, she could not determine, for it quickly disappeared. No. It could not be the unbeautiful light. He liked her for herself. This belief she treasured fondly. They had a long ride out in the country, where the winds were soft and faintly scented and the bamboo trees sighted love to the breeze. They visited a little out of the way Nipa Chapel by the roadside, where a naked man, nailed to the cross, looked at them with eyes withheld at the tragedy and the sorrow of the world for the sins of sinning men. She gazed at the figure feeling something vague and incomprehensible staring within her. She turned to him for sympathy and found him staring at her, at her body. He turned slightly red. In silence, they left the little chapel. He helped her inside the car, but did not start it at once. I... I love... He stammered. After some moments, as if impelled by an irresistible force, then he stopped. The small eyes that slanted at the corners were almost beautiful with a tender, soft light as she turned them on him. So he loved her. Had he learned not only to like her, but to love her? For herself? And the half-finished confession found an echo in the heart of the woman who was starved for love. Yes, there was a pleading note in her voice. He swallowed hard. I love your body. He finished with a thick voice. 
and the blue eyes flared with a dreaded, hateful light. She uttered an involuntary cry of protest, of pain, of disillusion, and then a sob escaped her. And dimly, the man from the West realized that he had wronged this little maiden with a homely face and beautiful body, as she never had been wronged before. And he felt sorry, infinitely so. When then stopped before the door of her house, he got out to open the door for her. I am sorry, was all he said. There was a world of regret in the eyes she turned on him. For what? she asked in a tired voice. You have just seen yourself like other men, he winced, and with a weary smile she passed within.